this is Rami, continuing on part two of composites manufacturing. Uh, the first part, we talked about converting polymers to carbon fibers. And the end of the process, these fibers are coated in the process called sizing. They are processed in big bundles, referred to in the industry as TOWs, T-O-W. And after that, they are rolled in big spools and uh, they go to the next process. Uh, the most common next step is to weave the fibers into mesh, very similar to cloth. So a lot of the fiber industry is based on the clothing industry. A lot of the technologies developed for fibers is also used for the same technology for the composites industry. So these bundles are taken to specifically designed machines to weave them together into different types of meshes. Uh, with a lot of different names. Uh, the most common examples would be a twill uh, weave, where uh, uh, half of the fibers go into the zero direction and the other half goes 90 degrees to that direction. And they, in, they are interwoven. The toe goes under some bundles, over some other bundles, crossing from side to side of the mesh. Uh, after processing the bundles and having those fiber weaves, as I said, the, in general, there are 0, 90 degrees. There are some special other meshes where the fibers are actually weaved into uh, 30 degree angle steps. So a bunch of uh, bundles go into the zero direction, then another bunch into the 60 degrees direction, and then a third bunch into the 120 degrees direction. And this creates more or less visually a hexagonal pattern that's not so commonly used. The most common, as I said, is the 090. And if you just add to it the adhesive material so the adhesive material in this is referred to as the matrix material so you'll have the reinforcement material and you have the matrix material and the reinforcement are the fibers and the matrix is usually adhesive uh, most commonly it's an epoxy based material if you just take one of those weaved meshes and add to it the adhesive to hold the fibers together you'll have a very strong relatively speaking very strong plate uh, along the zero direction and the 90 degree direction but as soon as you load it in a 45 degree direction or 60 degrees or whatever it has no real significant strengths and if you do any shear loading uh, also the plate doesn't have any real significant strengths in general and that's why usually uh, carbon reinforced plates are made of multiple layers of those weaves and the layer directions are changed between different layers so usually the most common assembly starts with a zero orientation then the upper layer goes to 45 then the other layer goes to 90 degrees then another layer goes to minus 45 and then back to zero and this kind of alternating or varying angles distributes the bundles of fibers into more than one or two directions so you'll have a bit more uh, balanced uh, fiber orientations in the plate and you'll end up with a more balanced tensile strength, shear resistance and in general mechanical uh, performance of the composite plate. And this uh, process of more than one layer is called the composite lamination and these are not as simple as they might sound. There's a lot of design that goes behind them to select specifically what, how many fibers are in each bundle, how many uh, layers you laminate, what are the orientation of the layers, um, and what's the um, number of fibers in each bundle and in the weave you have different types of weave. Some weaves are optimized for tensile, some other weaves are optimized for shear, loading. So there's a lot of science and engineering behind the design of the lamination and the composite. And if you just laminate plates and you laminate meshes, you end up with just a simple two-dimensional board or plate but as you know composites are used a lot into making airplane wings to make uh, windmill uh, blades so th these these weaves are bent into shape and that's usually done by having a mold a positive shape mold uh, just the embossed surface where you just place the cloth you place the weave of fibers and you shape it to the shape of the mold and then you infuse later, you add into adhesive. This 
process of sh shaping the layers onto the mold is called draping and even draping is a process that uh, was developed from cloth industry when you have a mannequin and you start draping the cloth on the mannequin to to fit the shape of, of the person you want, you're designing the clothes for and this was adapted for the composites industry to also take the shape of the blade and you drape the fiber mesh on the on the mannequin of the of the blade and then you add in the adhesive to keep it in place, to keep it in a fixed shape at the end. So it becomes a solid body, a solid composite. That's it for part two, in general about the composite industry. And part three, I will start to talk a bit about uh, what are limitations, what are challenges in the process, and what are different directions to innovate and adjust in the industry. I actually mentioned one direction at the beginning of this video, but I'll explain more about it in the next video. If you like what I'm presenting, what I'm describing, subscribe to the channel and let me know what other things you'd like to know about composites. Thank you for tuning in.